Hey guys, Raif Darazi here, and today I want to go over what the difference is between PrEP and PEP. Both are related to HIV, however, we hear more about PrEP because it's more prevalent on social media, online, in ads, and now even in TV commercials. But it's important that we understand what the functions and use cases for both are and how they play a role in ending the HIV epidemic. Okay, so first off, PrEP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. It's helpful to remember the pre part, that's why there's an R in it, and it's for pre-exposure to HIV. PEP stands for post-exposure prophylaxis, and that's post or after exposure to HIV. So PrEP is traditionally one of two different oral medications, either Truvada or Discovy. It's a pill that's taken once a day. Um, indefinitely, as long as you feel that you might have exposure, potential exposure to the HIV virus. Just recently, there is an injectable version of PrEP that's approved by the FDA, and it's an injection that you would take once every two months. So that's a major game changer, especially for those of you who don't want to be taking a pill every single day. Another solution listed on the HIV.gov website is the 211 schedule for taking PrEP. Instead of taking PrEP every day indefinitely, you know, a lot of people are adverse to the idea of that. You can take two pills of PrEP 24 hours before potential exposure, one essentially at the time of exposure, and then one 24 hours after that, and that has proven to be extremely effective as well. Of course, this implies that you know that you're going to have a potential exposure to HIV in 24 hours. If you don't know that, then that doesn't help you. But now we have the injectables. If you do not have health insurance and or you are financially strapped, do not be dismayed. Um, on the government website, readysetprep.hiv.gov, you can sign up, see if you qualify for free PrEP, even if you don't have health insurance. And if you do have health insurance, they can guide you to the right place to get it. Okay, and now moving on to PEP. Again, post-exposure prophylaxis, this is for after potential exposure to the HIV virus it is crucial that you take PEP within 72 hours or three days after potential exposure to the HIV virus. And then you would subsequently take a pill every day for 28 days after that. And that has proven to be extremely effective at stopping potential transmission of the HIV virus. Some of the places you can get PEP is your local doctor's office, urgent care, emergency care, HIV clinic, local community organizations. There are plenty of places to get it. And with both PrEP and PEP, there is no reason why we can't slow down, if not completely halt, the HIV epidemic. Now we just need more education. We need people to realize that they have access to these types of things and getting the word out so that we can finally stop it. With the advent of PrEP and PEP and the accessibility of both, at least here in the US, there is no reason why we shouldn't be able to slow down, if not completely stop, the HIV epidemic. In subsequent videos, I will go into more detail about PrEP and PEP separately, so stay tuned for that. Now let's move on to the quote of the day. Today's quote of the day comes from Luan Dong. Luan says, just wish there was something we could do to greatly reduce our chances of getting HIV. I just don't understand why we're so disproportionately infected with HIV compared to other demographics. It's certainly mystery. Now this video obviously touches on something that can help us prevent transmission of HIV. It is very, very effective. There's no reason why people should be getting infected with HIV if they are effectively using PrEP and or PEP. Now to touch on the other part of the comment, which is why we are so disproportionately infected, and by we, I don't know if you mean the gay community or LGBTQ in general or just minority groups in general, I would venture to guess that there is a lot of reasons. It's a complex issue. It can be a lack of education, a lack of access, maybe being in the closet on the DL and not wanting to be associated with those types of things. It can be from pressures from our friends, our family, our social groups. Maybe it's financial. Maybe we don't have ways to pay for getting a hold of those things or aren't aware that there's government subsidized programs to help us get a hold of PrEP and PEP. Or maybe it's just simply not accessible, available in the area where you live. There can be so many different reasons. They're all at play and bottom line is we are disproportionately infected with HIV. Not only that, but it also creates a certain level of stigma for these minority groups. It's, um, it's kind of like being kicked while you're down. It's a, it's a double whammy. However, 
I am very hopeful that with more education, more access, more resources and tools at our disposal coming together, reducing the stigma, we can finally slow down, if not end, the HIV epidemic, even if we don't officially have a cure or a functional cure. We can stop it in its tracks. And with that said, please like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and please share this with someone who might find value in it. And I will see you all soon. Cheers. Let's make